so thank you. Uh, let me um, just have a little introduction about uh, our latest development, not only from the technical point of view, but just also from the company overview. Because recently we have joined an, a bigger group of uh, companies called Axe Group, and now we are in the information management uh, business unit. But we can count on many more uh, people working with us. Uh, from the technical engineering point of view, from also the digital production and also consulting. Uh, AR Media is actually the, the company brand for uh, everything related to augmented reality, virtual reality, and then more generally speaking to perceptual computing. And user products like the AR Media plugins for soft content, so content creation software like 3ds Max, Maya, Cinema, 4D, and SketchUp. And the authoring platform like uh, Hyperspaces, that is a general purpose uh, platform for augmented reality. And recently, we also have uh, released another more vertical solution uh, regarding the authoring platform, and that is Hyper Industry. And uh, also, from three years, more or less, we also um, started addressing uh, and proposing a solution for uh, software developers with GR Media SDK. Of course, the market related to augmented reality is very, very huge. I don't have to spend a lot of words on this. Our clients are more in more of 30 countries. We have more than 2,000 customers and uh, more than 50,000 registered users worldwide. So let's get uh, to the SDK itself. And I will try to describe what we have today, starting from the beginning. So basically, when we first started, in uh, June 2013, we developed uh, not the tracking the technologies, but technology, but we uh, didn't release it as an SDK. We just wanted to propose as a uh, service or as custom solutions, but uh, um, and it was very close platform for iOS, Android, Windows, and Mac OS. But next year, uh, in uh, during the AWE, we released the. Uh, in uh, Santa Clara, we released uh, the object tracking SDK with that, just that feature. So no other kind of tracking technologies, no planet tracking or geolocation tracking and so on. And after one year, again, uh, during the AWE in Santa Clara, we added more features to the SDK, uh, 360 panorama viewer, 3D viewer, um, motion tracking, this meaning uh, um, inertial uh, sensor uh, tracking. And uh, also, we improved the uh, uh, rendering facilities and the uh, way you can uh, display 3D models with the SDK. <laughs> the last version, uh, released in March this year, added also primer tracking and the location tracking. And uh, just today, we released the new version with a lot of improvements, the version 2.1.0, uh, 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 with a lot of performance improvement, but uh, also a very complete uh, API documentation, both for Android and iOS. And uh, most of all, we released the multiple object tracking. This meaning that you can recognize and track more than one object uh, uh, in the same application at the same time. Uh, and also, we improved a lot and simplified the tracking data uh, process, the data creation process. I will talk about this in a few minutes. So talking about the SDK, in general, we, have, uh, we provide several tools uh, all around the SDK itself. Uh, uh, talking about that uh, target creation process, you will use the Air Media Toolset uh, app for iOS and Android that is basically used to capture the object you want to recognize and track. Uh, then you use the developer portal to manage your licenses or the tracking data. And uh, sometimes you can use also third-party components if you want to have much more control, for instance, on point cloud generation and uh, cleaning the point cloud on, and so on. But these are optional components and are not required. And you can also mm, count on uh, conversion utilities if uh, the format, the, 3D, the file format of your uh, 3D models are not supported, but we use, usually support a lot of formats like FBX, OBJ, 3DS, uh, and others. Uh, talking about the tracking technologies that you can find in the SDK, we have a tracking module that actually uh, up to date uh, has this kind of uh, tracking components. So you can track and recognize images, objects, locations, or using the IME and use uh, unit of the device to position our object all around you. 
talking about the content and the visualization, uh, you have three choices, basically. You can either you know, program and develop uh, your, your rendering engine, or you can rely on the rendering module itself or the SDK, so we provide, for instance, on iOS view controller or uh, activities on Android, where you just start the activity or the view controller and add the content and set up the tracker and that's all. You can load the, modem, the models directly without any, uh, very, very few programming actually. And also you can rely on a Unity plugin. Uh, talking about the licensing and subscription models, you can start a subscription for one, six or 12 months, are required to manage your application keys and to create and manage the tracking data. Um, of course, on the developer portal, you will also have, um, you can also get support and talk with other developers if you want. <coughs> so let's go to the new features of the SDK. Uh, first of all, the multiple object tracking. You, I think you know what object tracking is. It's recognition and tracking of objects. So three-dimensional structure, not uh, an image, not a flat poster or whatever. Uh, and multiple is the, what does it mean? It means that you can recognize and track more than one ob object of this kind, also different, completely different object. You don't have to recognize different part of the same object. It's up to you, actually. Then, going to the process of the, the tracking data creation, uh, first of all, you take pictures. You, you use the AR Media Toolset application. And you take uh, a certain number of pictures that depends on the nature of the object and uh, the purpose of the uh, application. But usually you could start taking 16 or 50 pictures. Uh, it really depends on the object itself. From those pictures, you create a point cloud. Uh, now I'm showing you the new workflow, the one that allows you to have much more control on the process. If you don't want to rely on, on third-party tools, you can just upload the pictures on our developer portal. Otherwise, you can use, for instance, a, this is a photo scan, where you just upload uh, the pictures that you have taken using the um, uh, toolset application. <coughs> you get a point cloud out of uh, those pictures. You can remove points that you don't want to uh, be in the tracking data. So you can filter out an object. For instance, if you want to take picture of, uh, uh, let's say, um, a building, you can remove the surroundings when you, rec we have re you have reconstructed the point cloud from this step. And when you will use the tracking data of that object, uh, the tracking engine will recognize the object and not the environment. So you can create the tracking data in one, one place and use the same tracking data in another place, for instance. Then to go on, on the, with the process, you can either use a CAD model if you have one, or you can uh, go further with the process and reconstruct a mesh with the, uh, starting from the pictures that you have taken. In both cases, the output of this step is an OBJ file, uh, can be an object file with a material library and a texture, textures eventually. Then the next step is to log in on our developer portal and uh, upload the point cloud that you have reconstructed, reconstructed if you have done this step. Otherwise, you just upload the images, like here. Then you upload the CAD model or the mesh that you have reconstructed. So basically an OBJ file with textures. And then <laughs> the next step is to make correspondences between the 3D model that you have uploaded on the left and a couple of pictures that you have taken using the toolset application. And this will help to choose a, a scale, a working scale and orientation of the augmentation with respect to the 3D model that you have uh, provided. Finally, you just send everything to the queue and everything you get processed on the cloud server that we have. And after a few minutes, you will get a result that basically is a zip file containing the tracking data. You download the zip file and you load it in the media toolset application where you can try on the real device, on the real object, and with using sliders, you can uh, tune the tracking parameters and save back into the application. And finally, you can deploy the, uh, the new tracking data for your purposes. So let's see 
a little bit more about um, what, is, what is related to the APIs. The basic design principle behind the SDK was, uh, since the beginning, simplicity. We wanted to provide a, a, a very good SDK, but we wanted to keep it as simple as possible in terms of APIs. Uh, and so with this goal in mind, uh, we first started address, addressing and targeting this platform, iOS and Android. To, you have to develop an application for Windows or Mac OS. We provide also an S, a version of uh, the JSK for those platform. And everything, uh, at least the generation of the, uh, the application key is uh, done, of course, on the developer portal. Uh, going to the tracking model, uh, as, uh, keep in mind that we want to have a very simple uh, SDK. With the tracking module, you just have uh, APIs ready to tracking. You don't have uh, mm, capturing APIs, uh, at least you have a capturing, um, camera capturing APIs, but you can totally skip those parts. And uh, just mm, what is important is that you just provide an OpenCV uh, frame. So as long as you have, are able to convert uh, any frame that you capture uh, with the method that you prefer into an OpenCV uh, math object, you can feed it in the, in the tracking APIs and get object tracking or facilities that we have. Uh, this is very important because also when uh, we talk about rendering part, we don't constrain you to use any specific rendering engine. Uh, so going to uh, the APIs themselves, basically what you have to do is to include the uh, header that you need, in this case uh, the object tracker header, and also the, uh, this is an iOS example, but it's straightforward to uh, translate it for Android. And also beyond the object tracker header, also the tracker delegates, so basically the listener for uh, tracking events and so on you have an instance of the object tracker itself in uh, your view controller in this case, or in your activity for Android. Then you just have to allocate the new tracker, set the application key, give a name for the tracker because you will need it for handling events, for instance. Uh, you set the listeners or delegates in this case for the tracker, and then you specify the configuration file for the tracker, where all the tracking data is uh, stored. Uh, and finally, you just init the tracker. After a while, you will get a notification from the APIs where initialization is completed. And then you can, if everything is fine, you can just start the tracker. And, uh, and uh, in this case, we have integrated with OpenCV, so you get this callback uh, function. And in this callback, we just pass the uh, frame that has been cap captured to the tracking engine. And uh, when you get some tracking events, you will get this kind of events. So in, if the object has, has been found or the object has been lost. And you can handle uh, visualization tasks or uh, other events if, if you want. And going to the rendering module, uh, again, we wanted to have very simple APIs. Uh, but nonetheless, we wanted to have to allow the developers to have a control on what they, they want to do. Uh, simplicity translates, in, for instance, in uh, loading models as is, without uh, any conversion. So you will see that we can load FBX files uh, like, just like uh, as they are exported for, from 3ds Max or whatever. You don't need to convert to other specific, uh, specific or native formats for loading in the uh, any application developer with this SDK. Uh, we manage uh, animation, so both rigid, rigid body animation, but also bond system, systems. Uh, and we provide view controller and activities that you can just plug and, pl plug and put into, into your application and use as is or der and derive classes, specific classes for those view controllers or activities. And there is not only AR in the SDK, but also some functionality that are going towards VR. So for instance, uh, panorama viewers and so on. We are also improving those features in, from time to time. And this is an example. For instance, this case uh, is uh, related to the new APIs related to multiple object tracking. So you include uh, both an object tracker and planner tracker uh, header. 
and also the listeners for these kind of trackers. And uh, in, in the bottom uh, rows, you see the kind of object that we can use, for instance, uh, um, AR model, uh, 3D geometries with animations, uh, movies or images that you can add to the AR scene. You set application key and the delegates or listener of the view controller to handle tracking and rendering events. You choose the configuration files for the tracking. In this case, we will use a couple of trackers for two different objects, for instance. Okay, this is just core for the super class view development method. And finally, you add the tracker specifying the name, the configuration file that you want to use, uh, and you init the, each tracker that you have added. In this case, we have a couple of trackers. You can see that we load an FBX file that has not been converted in any way. You can specify tra transformation for the, um, for the object that you want to add, and you choose where you want to add the model, in this case, to the object tracker. Uh, again, we wanted to keep it as simple as possible, so we created some, a set of prefabs that uh, it comes with a uh, in plugin package, and, uh, I, and one example for each tracking method. And also, what is really nice, and I will show you a demo, uh, is that interaction with the real object is, comes very easy because of the process involved in the reconstruction of the object itself. And you will see it at the end of the presentation. So basically, uh, in Unity, you have, uh, I think you cannot read anything on that. Uh, you have uh, an object called Air Media SDK, and uh, I'll have one or more uh, trackers with the other games object that are controlled by those trackers. Maybe in this screen you will see better. For instance, this is the uh, information related to the AR Media object, AR Media SDK object that you always have uh, in your uh, game or application. You just have to specify the application key that is used to, uh, for licensing purposes. Uh, you have a, an array, a list of uh, trackers, in this case uh, just two trackers, and you specify the camera that must render the scene. For each tracker, you have this kind of information. You just provide the name of the tracker. Uh, again, the, it, it is used just to handle events, tracking events. Uh, a configuration file that comes from the developer portal uh, related to tracking uh, data, related to the tracker. And the augmented content is uh, attached to the uh, air media object target in this case. So basically you just have three entities in, in your scene. The air media SDK, uh, an object tracker or planner tracker or whatever, and the related targets that you attach to each, each tracker. So I think that I can show you <coughs> how this works in practice. Okay, this is a sample scene. You have a, mm, this is a reconstruction of the, um, of a box, okay? And has been made, taking pictures of the box from all angles. Uh, in the scene here, you have the MED SDK, as I told you earlier. Uh, you have an object tracker, game object, with the tracking configuration here, specified by this configuration file. And uh, this game object, uh, this tracker, uh, as a reference to a target, that is this other game object here, and uh, this controls the way the content is uh, displayed. And so you can have the, the mesh of the reconstructed object in the editor, and you can add the 3D content on top of this, and when you run the application, you won't see the box because it is uh, only used for reference. Uh, but the nice thing is that uh, you can interact with it because you have 3D model of the, uh, of the box itself. And so basically that's all. I'm sorry for the technical issues <laughs> and hope that you will mm, come and join me to see the demo if you are interested. Thank you. If you have any questions. <laughs>